You are tuned to Ari Learning, and I am your host, Teacher Teacher. In this lesson on mixtures and separation, we will examine the extraction of sucrose from sugarcane. Check the description box for links to all the videos related to this unit. By the end of this lesson, we should be able to describe the extraction of sucrose from sugarcane. So what is sugarcane? Sugarcane is a perennial grass that is cultivated for its juice from which sucrose is obtained. So what happens before the sugarcane gets to the factory? Well, the sugarcane stalks are harvested and transported to the factory via trucks or trolleys. Now, what happens when the sugarcane is delivered to the factory? The sugarcane stalks are washed to remove dirt, tiny insects, and other things, and then cut into smaller pieces by revolving knives in a shredder. Note that it is best for the sugarcane juice to be extracted within 24 hours of harvesting to ensure maximum yield of the sucrose. If the juice is extracted after 24 hours, some of the sucrose is broken down and this reduces the yield of the product. We will now take a look at six steps for the extraction of sucrose from sugar cane and they are crushing followed by precipitation and sedimentation filtration vacuum distillation crystallization and centrifugation and we'll start with crushing crushing involves the small pieces of sugar cane being passed through a series of roller mills to extract the juice during this time water is sprayed over the rollers during the crushing and this helps to extract or dissolve the sucrose from the cane about 93% of the juice is extracted from sugarcane during the crushing process. Therefore, the product of the crushing process is diluted cane juice, as well as there's a byproduct, which is the trash from the cane, which we call bagus. The diluted cane juice from the mills has a dark green color. It is acidic and turbid. Turbid meaning that it contains suspended sediments. Now, the bagus does not go to waste. It is used by the factory as a fuel to generate electricity. So the bagus is burned. The heat is used to boil water, which changes into steam upon evaporation. And the steam is used to drive a turbine, which generates the electricity. Now we're going to have a quick review of the crushing process. Crushing. The sugar cane is crushed through a series of roller mills to extract the juice. The cane juice collected is dilute and contains many impurities. The cane trash, which is a byproduct of the crushing process, is called bagus. Bagus is used to generate electricity for the factory. The next two steps, which are precipitation and sedimentation followed by filtration, involves the purification of the cane juice. And this basically involves the removal of soluble and insoluble impurities. So the next stage is precipitation and sedimentation. At this stage, the dilute cane juice contains soluble and insoluble impurities. The insoluble impurities include the sediments of dirt, trash, stones, and any other solid debris that is in the um, juice. The juice is passed into a settling tank, which is also known as a clarifier. In the settling tank, the cane juice is heated and slaked lime added. Slaked lime is calcium hydroxide chemical formula CaOH2. The slaked lime reacts with soluble impurities in the cane juice to form precipitates, which are solids, and these solids or precipitate eventually settle out of the mixture. The lime also neutralizes the acidic cane juice, forming insoluble lime salts. Neutralizing the cane juice is very important to increase the yield of the sucrose from the juice. The acidity of the juice can cause the sucrose, which is the disease desired sugar product to break down into the simple sugars, glucose and fructose. And of course, if the sucrose is breaking down into glucose and fructose, then we would reduce the yield of the sucrose if we maintain the acidity of the juice. So after precipitation has been completed, then we have sedimentation as the priority. In this case, what happens is that the solid impurities, which are the sediments and the insoluble precipitation, precipitates will settle out of the juice to form what is called mud. The juice now has a brown color and more of a transparent appearance. 
The next step of purification of the cane juice involves filtration. This is where the mud is removed from the mixture by continuous filtration as the juice passes through rotary filters. So the products of filtration include the clarified or purified cane juice along with the byproduct mud. And mud, of course, is all the insoluble impurities which include the sediments and precipitates. The clarified juice is dilute and it contains about 85% water. And the juice, of course, the purified juice is free of all the impurities and has a light brown transparent appearance. The mud, on the other hand, which is the residue of the filtration process, is washed and pressed to extract most of the cane juice which contains the sucrose. The mud is not wasted. It is actually used as a fertilizer in the cane fields for the next round of canes to be grown. So let's take a brief look at the products of filtration. Products of filtration. After filtration, we have a clear light brown juice. The juice is separated from the mud. The mud is washed and pressed to extract any juice lingering in it. After filtration, we have vacuum distillation. Now, vacuum distillation involves the evaporation of a liquid under reduced pressure so that the liquid boils or evaporates at a lower temperature than under atmospheric pressure or what we call normal atmospheric pressure. And so as a result, this reduces the risk of decomposition. And in the case of the cane juice, it will reduce the risk of the sucrose decomposing or charring. So, where does the clarified or the purified juice go when it's undergoing vacuum distillation? So the clarified juice, as we know, contains 85% water. And what happens is that it's passed through a series of three or four broilers where the vacuum distillation occurs. With each successive boiler, what happens is that the pressure is lowered and this reduces the boiling or the evaporation temperature of each consecutive column. So so as the water level reduces each time and the juice is passed to the next boiler, the temperature at which the water will evaporate decreases each time time. And this, of course, as we mentioned earlier, will prevent decomposition and charring of the sucrose. So by the time vacuum distillation is finished, what happens is that two-thirds of the water that's present in the cane juice is removed. So the product of vacuum distillation is concentrated cane juice, which has a consistency of syrup. After vacuum distillation is crystallization. And crystallization is the process of extracting a solid solute in a crystalline form from a concentrated solution. And we just got our concentrated solution of cane juice from the vacuum distillation process. So the next step is to crystallize the sucrose from the concentrated cane juice. And this happens in what we call a vacuum pan. And we can see what a vacuum pan would look like in a sugar factory. Now the cane juice is slowly evaporated to supersaturation in the vacuum pan. And this forms a dense mixture of sucrose and molasses, which is called mascuite. The mascuite is transferred then into large containers called crystallizers, where the mixture is slowly stirred and cooled to promote crystallization. The mascuite is a mixture of sucrose crystals suspended in molasses. And here we can see on a sheet of glass a sample of mascuite, which consists, you see those little granules, shiny granules, within the brown syrup or molasses. The next step is centrifugation. So we have to be able to separate the sucrose crystals from the molasses. Now, centrifugation involves a process of spinning a mixture around an axis at very high speed to separate the components according to their different densities. It is. And so in the case of the mascuite, we have the sugar crystals needing to be separated from the molasses. So what machinery is used in centrifugation? And of course, that is called a centrifuge. So the mascuite mixture is actually transferred to a centrifuge. The centrifuge consists of an inner cylindrical basket with very tiny perforations. As the mascuite is spun 
on at very high speed in the centrifuge. This forces the molasses through the tiny perforations and the sucrose crystals are retained in the basket. Now this is somewhat like the spin cycle of the clothing washing machine. During the spin cycle, the water is flashed out of the inner basket that is spinning at high speed within the washing machine, leaving or retaining the clothes inside the barrel. So the product of centrifugation is the raw sugar, which is the sucrose, the desired product. And also there is the byproduct called molasses, the dark brown viscous liquid in which the sucrose crystals were initially suspended in. The sucrose crystals are referred to as raw sugar. And it's important to note that after separation, they usually contain some moisture coating the surface of the crystals. And so they have to be air dried in order to remove that trace of moisture, that trace of water. Now raw sugar is also known as brown sugar or unrefined sugar. We just mentioned that the sugar crystals or the sucrose crystals have some moisture coating them and so to dry these crystals they are passed through a rotary dryer and the crystals are gently tumbled in a stream of warm air for about 20 minutes and that does the job and it's very important for the drying of the sucrose crystals otherwise they will actually clump together. The final molasses that is collected is called black strap and it contains water, sucrose, glucose and fructose. As we mentioned before, all the byproducts in the extraction of sucrose from the cane juice are very useful. And the same applies to molasses. Molasses can be consumed directly or used in cooking. It can also be fermented to produce rum or alcohol. And it can also be used as an animal feed supplement. Let us take a look at our lesson summary. First point, the extraction of sucrose from sugarcane involves the following steps. Crushing, precipitation and sedimentation, filtration, vacuum distillation, crystallization, and centrifugation. And of course, from that, the main product that we have obtained is sucrose. Now, along with the sucrose, we have some byproducts from our reaction. And the byproducts of sucrose extraction from sugarcane are bagus, mud, and molasses. And as we mentioned in the lesson, all these byproducts are very useful. Bagus is used as a fuel to generate electricity. Mud is used as a fertilizer in agriculture. And molasses can be fermented to produce rum. It's quiz time and you have five seconds to answer each question after it is read aloud. Question one. Identify the process that is not involved in the extraction of sucrose from cane juice. A. Crystallization. B. Filtration, C. Sublimation, D. Centrifugation. The answer is C. Sublimation. Question 2. Which process involves the addition of slaked lime to the cane juice? A. Crushing, B. Precipitation, C. Filtration, D. Centrifugation. <music> answer is B. Precipitation. Question 3. All the following are byproducts of the extraction of sucrose from cane juice except A. Electricity, B. Molasses, C. Bagus, D. Mud. <music> The answer is A, electricity. Question four, which of the following is not a use of molasses? A, a supplement in animal feed. B, a fertilizer in agriculture. C, to make rum through fermentation. D, an ingredient used in cooking some foods. <music> The answer is B, a fertilizer in agriculture. So molasses is not used as a fertilizer in agriculture. Question 5. Why is vacuum distillation used to remove the excess water from the cane juice? A, to clarify the juice. B, to filter the juice. C, to precipitate out impurities from the juice. D, to prevent charring and decomposition of the sucrose. <music> The answer is D, to prevent charring and decomposition of the sucrose.
We have reached the end of our lesson. If you found this video helpful, remember to like, share, and subscribe. When you subscribe, you will receive notifications as new videos are uploaded. So until next time, I am Teacher Teacher with iRelearning.